the you have arrived. right there. Pretty, very pretty. Let's swing back and go in. So as you can see, this thing lays out super private. You're back off of the road three quarters of a mile and it's all private drive. Envisioning already food plots up here in the open areas. And Furnace. This is just their system that they've got for their to supply to all their. They got home runs ran to every single faucet. Well, that worked out pretty nice. So I'm staying in Ava, a one horse town, Ava, Missouri. One motel and one gas station. Happened to be a Casey, so I'll take it. It's been a long day on the road, raining and winding hills and stuff, so it's gonna be good to relax. All right, it's been a long day today. It's been rainy. I looked at three properties today. The first two were like wipeouts, just <laughs> kind of a waste of time. Third one today was interesting. I don't know when I'm gonna post that video. If I've already posted it, I'll put a link in the description because it's, it's something we might pursue. It really is. It's the airstrip in the Ozark Mountains by Branson, Missouri. Pretty, pretty darn good property. Very expensive, but pretty good. So anyways, we're on our last one. So let's get some sleep. I'm in a motel room in Ava, Missouri. That's the reality. You got to put your time in when you're looking for, you know, the right property to get the most bang for your buck. Because it's not easy. I mean, because we don't like have any employees. We don't have like people that we could say, hey, go out and search out properties. We do this all ourselves. Sharon's working full time. I try to keep busy with by the way, we did sell a huge chunk of our Illinois land. Stay tuned for that. It happened fast. I mean within a week and I'm almost like, gosh, did we sell it for too cheap? Because I you know, we did such a good job on developing that property. Anyways, I'll there'll be an episode on that. So anyways, let's go for property number four. We were supposed to look at two properties here today, tomorrow morning. One of them got sold like today. They, they took an offer on it, so that wiped out one of them. So tomorrow I'm going to look at the last property. It's a pretty good one from what we could see, you know, on the website and the pictures. It's 237 acres, a new home, 2019, with a basement, more storage, and a four-acre lake. It looks like a DIY lake. But hey, if it's deep enough and it holds fish, it don't matter. Let's go on a road trip and check out property number four for this go around and see what happens. Here we are, morning number two. Uh, we lost one of the two we were gonna look at today. So I'm headed out. It's about an hour and a half to the north to this uh, next farm. And that's the last one for today. Last one to wrap up this little mini trip. So let's see how it goes. It's still gloomy. It's kind of drizzling. I haven't seen the sun forever. Oh, there's a little equipment shop. I haven't seen the sun for, seems like forever. Hopefully at least it don't pour on us again. Let's go see if we can find a new adventure. All right, we're getting close to the new property. So let me show you the actual listing of this property. Um, it's a newer construction home with a full basement, 2,400 square feet, three bedrooms on top, plus you could have kind of unofficial bedrooms in the basement. It was built in 2019. Asking price is $1.1 million. So I'll roll through just some of the pictures of the listing real quick so you know exactly what we're looking at here in a minute.
are, uh, it's a lot flatter out here. It's, a, it's still rolling hills, um, but it's a lot flatter ground, a lot of cattle ground. Everything I've seen across this whole state is uh, on the south end is cattle ground. There's no crop fields anywhere down in the Ozarks, in the hills. It's all cattle, cattle ground. Had a couple good talks with Felipe. You know, he's literally four or five days away from the closing on his Illinois place. And then they're moving to a camper while the purchase of their new dream farm finishes out. Lots of moving parts. They ain't gonna rest easy until the closing next week. Um, where they get the check in their hand, you know, which obviously they need for the down payment for the new place. A lot of moving parts, um, but the turnoff for this is coming in 1.9 miles on the next highway, so we'll check back in here and see how it looks. It'd be great if it was sunny out, but the, I mean, this is farm country. There's some crummy looking farms with trash laying around. Uh, that seems to be anywhere you go in rural America, but some spots more than others. Take the next ride onto State Highway H. Continue on State Highway H for one and a half miles. So one and a half miles up to the farm. I believe it's going to be on the left side, I'm not positive at the moment. A couple rundown places, uh, there's an abandoned place up here, a little home that's overgrown. Just saw a big flock of turkeys out in the hay field. That's always good. I don't know if you could see, like I said, it's really gently rolling hills, which I'm okay with. It all depends on the actual ground, how it lays, but right now, this is the train In car. In a quarter ride. mile, you will arrive at your destination. Because so, there's a caboose, a train car up here, and there it is right here on the left. So, I'm going to shoot past it. There's a abandoned house over here on the right. I'm going to shoot past it quick. On both fields on the left are part of this property and then there's a little cutout for this little house right here it's like a two acre cutout and then back back here you own all these fields up front there's like 70 acres up in the front here I see you have arrived right there Pretty, very pretty. Let's swing back and go into place. There's a little dog running loose there. so as the way this property lays out I mean you could sell off some lots up here in the front and, and recoup some money because this house is gonna need a new garage if we want a garage that is and it's gonna need a new barn for equipment here in the back but you could sell off some front land recoup some money but you're gonna have new neighbors This section of trees on the left, it's an orchard, it's various fruit trees. Um, I get the impression they've tried a lot of different um, kind of homestead, farmstead incomes, you know, chickens, pigs, fruits and vegetables, and there's a greenhouse and all those kind of things. Alright, I'm going to go up to the house, they're going to offload up front, it's a bit of soft, 
But here's the property line of the 160 that I had. Nice and clean fence line. So as you can see, this thing lays out super private. You're back off of the road, oh, probably three quarters of a mile, and it's all private drive. Uh, this entire gravel from the caboose on is owned by you, by this property. So it, it sits very, very privately, which obviously attracts us to a property like this. So, I mean, I'm envisioning already food plots up here in the open areas at the edges of these woods and maybe some loblolly plantings and who knows what else, you know, we could work on this place. But first, let's get back to the house, I guess. So I know a lot of people are already thinking, especially if, when you see the next clip, man, a lot of junk everywhere, you know, there's stuff everywhere. Well, you got to see past that. First of all, when the, the people move out, this is all going to be cleared out. Some of these buildings are actually going to be removed, you'll see here in the video. Um, but just vision past the ugly part, you know, all the stuff everywhere. Man, is it a wet and mucky mess. Um, but we're going to go in and we're going to check out the house. I'm going to show you the house and then we're going to go part two is going to be the land and then definitely stay tuned. We made an offer and a counter offer on this place and you're going to see why here in just a minute. Which was a joke and thrown out. So he, because of that great success, he so was transferred. Three bedroom? Yeah, it's supposed to be three bedroom. DC, One of the bedrooms don't have a, a closet. It is the place okay. everybody's trying to get to. So one of the things that I always ask on all these, obviously, you got your power, your water source, and so forth. But internet's a big thing. I like this one because it's um, it's got high speed fiber buried all the way to the residence. You know, three quarters of a mile back off the road. And you know, with the YouTube channels and, and being active on social media, the internet access is a thing. As you're gonna see. Uh, we've also been pricing out things like the HughesNet and the new Starlink satellite internet just in case we end up that way. But this is a really nice house. It's not a double wide. It's custom built by a local builder. Uh, I think it's got nine foot walls. I'm not 100% in the basement. You're going to see it's got, I think, nine and a half, maybe 10 foot ceilings. Uh, we talked to this gentleman and he went to great lengths to think about everything on the build of this house. It is set up for an outdoor wood furnace where you, all you got to do is pipe in um, the, the pipes, if you will. But the underground tubes are already there. There's a platform. As you saw earlier, there was a, uh, a wood burner outside. He hadn't got it hooked up yet, but it was part of his plans. So they went to great lengths planning on this house, which is really why I like it, you know, mainly for Sharon, you know, for a nicer and a newer home. Got a wood burner here that he's got toasty warm right now. He's got some logs on the fire. So let's do a walkthrough of the home in the basement and you'll see kind of why I really like this home. It's a really nice home. Fireplaces. Oh yeah, it's actually like warm. And the master. 
big closet spaces. Uh, that'd be Sharon's bathroom, probably this end over here. Looks just like the entrance to the bunker that he was talking about. Oh, yeah. I like that. Okay. Nice. Cool. Let me get a quick look at them bedrooms down there again because one of them would be mine. Office, and this would be a bedroom. Walk out to the deck. I'd have to have my hot tub out here somewhere, probably. Uh, that's probably another closet. Yep. be the office. Love that porch, beautiful. Yeah, this would be the YouTube office right here. He was in the Marine Corps. I guess we'll start this way. Do you think there are eight or ten foot ceilings? They look like nine to me. Yeah, I was gonna say they kind of look like in between. Yeah, maybe nine and a half. I'm right at about eight whenever I do this. Yeah, them. Huh. All right. I like that. Kids pad down here if they come visit. Uh, okay, so that's different. Safe room, I guess is what they're calling it. Safe. Got enough ammo to get him by for long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. I should have enough room for my stuff. I doubt you're going to move that out of here. I got one in my place that's going to have to stay. I brought it in with a skid steer when the house was being <laughs> built. Yeah, not fun to move. He's, they, I mean, I'm sure you read it. They said they got a plumbed for uh, the outdoor furnace or geothermal. But the only question I had with that was that, well, I don't know. Did you see that all the plastic pipes they had for the water? Uh -huh. Them geothermals run at 200 or 300 degrees, uh, or at least an outdoor wood burner. And I don't know how plastic would would work for that. I've got, I've got mine using the here. I mean, geothermal, that's just the earth temp, right? Yeah. But for an outdoor furnace, I don't see how that works. I use PEX on mine, and uh, that stuff's pretty durable, man. One time I came home, and my draft fan was stuck open on mine, and I could hear the water. Your outdoor boiling. wood burner? Yeah. Okay. I could hear the water boiling inside of it. Right. And I was that was my first thought. I was like, man, the Pex pipe's probably melted. It's probably pumping water in my basement. Right. I went down there, and the, the Pex pipes held up. They never. Really? Yeah. This is how. I got a buddy that does the same thing here. And so they pump the water around. But most of the time, they put this these Pex pipes run in the floor, and they put like a jip creep stuff about an inch and a half thick. Okay. But I'm not sure what they've got going on here. But. Well, I don't think it's functional, but they said it according to the thing that it's, yeah. you know, they have everything labeled, laundry. 
it looks like they've got something where they can right. iron off of their, their water heater if they want to also. Interesting. Oh no. This isn't for the outdoor furnace. This is just their system that they've got for their to supply to all their they got home runs ran to every single faucet. So like this Oh is, just the water supply. Yeah. So because this is a water heater here, so the cold water comes in here from that from that okay. here. So I wonder if this is what they meant that it's plumbed yeah. for the outdoor for an outdoor furnace. Yeah. Okay. So that you can run pecs up through there to come up and then run your pipes in to do that. And then the way I've got mine is I've got a, a heat exchanger that sits inside of the of my furnace. Or right, my, my right. Ace, AC, HVAC unit. And then the water pumps through there like a radiator and then it heats your house that okay. way. Okay. So that's probably. Yeah, or that's how ours was, was like that. Yeah. But yeah, that's just our normal plumbing system there. Okay. I got a buddy that runs those, but he puts some you know, jet cream on the floors above, and you can use that to actually heat your right. House so yeah, I guess I had the, imp um, the impression, but this must have been what they meant by plumbed for the outdoor yeah. furnace. They must have stopped short. I mean, I wonder what the batteries are all Looks for. Looks like they plan on trying to do some solar at one point, and just never got around to it. And a basement, got a shower and toilet. Yeah, everything's nice and dry down here in the basement. Yeah, this is nice because you can come down here in any faucet in the entire house. You can come right. down here. Right, yeah, and that, I mean, that is off. convenient for sure. That's just a standard electric, looks like water heater. So this this don't look like a heat pump though. <clears throat> there, mu there must be a separate HVAC and then a separate AC compressor. I'm guessing, but maybe it is. Well, the, it's running right now because that's that's warm. So my guess is it, it's a heat pump. But we can ask it. it. Looks like it's a heat pump with electric backup to me. But Oh yeah. oh yeah, see here's, we've already got the heat exchanger in there. So you run your PEX pipe in, one goes in, one goes out, and it circulates through that, and you can use that to heat your valves. So now, now I'm curious if this is uh, an electric heat pump or LP. I don't see an LP line. Maybe it is a heat pump. All right, we'll what ask them that. Talking about I'm talking, yeah, the heat and the, I mean, we yeah. got heat pumps in both of ours, uh, so you don't need propane. Yeah. This I has don't. to be a heat pump. Normally, whenever the heat pump's running, this this line gets warm, but it's usually a little bit warmer than that. But, hmm. So I can't. Yeah. See, it'd be nice if we could see the corners. Clearly got a pitched lip right here. I can see it. Probably not on the on the camera. Does have heat in a few areas. So aside from you know the ingress, egress, legal. I mean, I suppose you could sleep yeah. down here. There's not actually any technical bedrooms down here. No. So that's the, that and the stairs, the two different stairs are the three entrances. Yeah. Right there. A little bit up in here. Hold on, where's the heat down here? There, there's the heat up here, right there, and let's see, 
bathroom now. There is a heat duct in the bathroom down here. Did that just for the showing. Yeah. <laughs> well, we might as well tap into that right. thing. Huh? I mean, if, if they made it for the showing, we might as well taste it. Remember when that letter came out and uh, it was all the former intelligence people and they were like, oh, this, I mean, we don't have any access to any. Had stuff in the shop and somebody kicked in my people door on the left side between those two sheds. I used the bolt lock to. Uh, that, these two buildings are going, and they're trying to sell that. They're gonna. That's like a mobile office. Uh, I just heard them say they got 50 k into this pond excavation. There's, it's not stocked yet. Hopefully, there ain't rock bass in there from the birds or whatever yet but this pad he said has a drain in it and a fire pit where you could put a pavilion in here uh you could also put obviously a metal building on this uh, there's obviously the fire pit he said there was a drain in here somewhere. This, I'm gonna paste this off just so I know. It'd be convenient to put a barn here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, seven, eight, thirty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. 66 30 by 66 ish uh, this is the buried container he said was starting to leak root cellar Oh, she's sagging a little on top. I just watched a YouTube video last night on these things on how you gotta reinforce them mm -hmm. for this exact reason. Otherwise the ground will wanna cave in on them. Yeah, I mean, it's sagging a little on the roof, but. Looks like even the shelves are bowing on the left. Yep. She's getting pushed in a little. Definitely a work in progress. Yeah. They had big plans. Yeah, for sure. Okay, wow. Thanks for joining us and sticking around this long. So we put an offer on this property. Uh, oh my gosh, I don't even know where to begin. You know, we've been working for so long, you know, two full-time careers, saving money, trying to invest on the side and so forth. And this is, you know, a $1.1 million property to get, you know, over to a freer state in Missouri. So anyways, I'm going to post at the right now, after this, I'm going to post my near real-time update on the first offer that we put in. We put in an offer at 900,000 and they were asking 1.1 million for this property. It has some good investment aspects. Like I said, you could sell off property and, and return some money back in. I mean, that's not what we want to do and you don't want new neighbors, but you also have to be a realist. So let's check out the offer we put in and definitely stay tuned to the channel. Hit the like button and subscribe to follow this because it's an ongoing process. It's a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of research. But hey, we love being in the outdoors and hopefully we'll find our new Freedom Farm soon. So let's see how the first offer went that I put in here anyways. So anyways, on the 227 acre homestead, we put in a written offer for 900,000. Um, we're waiting. We got word that 
they're gonna counter us. We're not gonna go much higher because one of the things we found out kind of after the fact is that uh, specialized healthcare for me is a two hour and five minute drive each way um, to get to Springfield, Missouri. Okay, so that's where we're gonna close out today's episode. We, we offered them 900K, we do have a counter offer on the table, then we did a counter counter offer. I'm gonna put an update probably tomorrow on the offers, cause each one of these offers has, you know, like a 48 hour timeline. So each offer and counter offer takes like several days. So definitely, if you enjoy this stuff, please hit the like button and subscribe. We appreciate that. Maybe even share it. Anyways, look for the next update in the next day or two to see if this is going to be our next forever farm or if we're going to keep searching. So thanks a lot. Have a great weekend. What's left of it. I hope to see you on the next one. Take care.